Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I've spent 13 years in the data and analytics. Oh, of course, this doesn't want to work right when we start. Okay, data and analytics, the last two with Agora Data, and I actually came from outside of the industry. So when I first joined Agora, the first thing I did was start digging into data and just seeing kind of what stories was it telling me. Uh, and a lot of what I found kind of made me say, hmm, that's interesting. It's not what I would have thought or what I hypothesized when I started looking into it. Uh, and I'm going to share some of those things when we talk about uh, how to originate loans so that they're as performant as possible. Um, for those that know the Agora name, you probably associate it with buying and selling auto loans. Uh, and that is where we got our start, uh, with the marketplace to do that online. And we still participate in the uh, you know, selling of loans, but we do it a little bit differently than we did when we started. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit, but it's not our main product line anymore. It's uh, something called Agora Capital. And what that is is a crowdsourced auto securitization, and that's a lot of words, and I will explain it uh, in this presentation and exactly what that means and what it means for you and your customers. Uh, but we also have something called Agora Insights, which is when you sign up with Agora and you integrate your data through your DMS, uh, it's a free platform for analytics and insights into your portfolio. Uh, we invest heavily into this, uh, millions of dollars, um, and the whole purpose of Agora Insights is to help the independent dealer community and finance companies. Um, we want to give you the same tools that some of the big franchise dealerships have that they've invested heavily in, and we want to give that to our community for free. Um, and in addition to that, offer some opportunities for financing. So the first one is Agora Trade, which is selling auto loans. Now, I said this is a little different than it probably has happened in the past, and if you've ever sold your loans, there's a handful of companies out there that buy auto loans. Um, we went to Wall Street to hedge funds and family offices and said, hey, how would you all like to invest in auto loans? It's a space that kind of requires a lot of uh, overhead to get started in, uh, to start buying and managing portfolios. Uh, and we kind of went to them and said, hey, get invested in this. And we kind of sit in the middle with all of the tools and resources they need um, to kind of invest in it. Uh, and then it, for those that want to sell loans on Agora, they only have to interface with one person, and that's Agora. And then there's these kind of Wall Street money on the back end. And what that means is that they have really cheap cost of funds. So they're able to actually offer more money for portfolios than some of the traditional players in the space. Um, we also have Agora Credit, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a line of credit, and it's a traditional line of credit in every sense, and it's really there just to bridge our customers to Agora Capital. And that's that crowdsourced auto securitization that we're going to get into in this presentation. So I want to cover you know, what is Agora Capital, how are we using advanced analytics and technology to change the industry with this, tech, with this you know, financial tool. Um, what does it mean for you? What does it mean for your customers? And then using data and insights, you know, how do you originate a loan so that it's the highest performing loan possible? Um, so to start with kind of what differentiates Agora, I have to talk about the approach of how we do things and how it's different than literally the way that every other company or finance a uh, company on the planet looks at a pool of assets. So we look at each and every loan individually on its own merits. We don't take a pool of loans and do all of our analysis at that pool level. And then when you know, loans move out or you originate new loans and loans move in, um, that analysis is now kind of stale and not really relevant. That's how every finance company does it. That's how everybody that's buying loans does it. That's how uh, every big bank on Wall Street evaluates an asset class. They do it at that portfolio level. Uh, we're using artificial intelligence and advanced analytics to look at everything at the loan level. And what that means is that 
we can look at dealers of any size because we're evaluating each loan by itself and we don't have to look at the whole. Um, so to answer that question, I have a question. What's the value of a loan? <laughs> uh, I think every dealer knows the value of the cars that are on their lot, right? Do you know the value of the loans in your portfolio? <laughs> so why do we know the value of the vehicles but not the portfolio? And it's not just the uh, you know, unpaid principal balance or gross balance, because losses happen, you know, it's a reality. Um, so what is that value? Uh, furthermore, if uh, you won the lottery and you wanted to move to the Caribbean and you wanted to sell your dealership, how would you know what it's worth? Right? You can go get the uh, book value on all your cars. What's the book value on your loans? Right? Uh, could you imagine trying to sell a car if you didn't know what the value is of it? Right? Obviously, that's not true because it didn't show up magically. You, <laughs> you bought that car, you reconditioned it, you got it ready to sell and on your lot. So you know the value. But what if you didn't know the value? How would you sell it? How would you train your people to sell it? Right? It would, uh, it would be very hard. <laughs> so why don't we know the value of our loans? That's what we're trying to solve at Agora is bring that transparency to your loan portfolio. So we invented something called the Agora Book Value, which provides a, a value for every loan in your portfolio. And it's the foundation of everything we do. So whether you're selling loans on Agora or you're refinancing your loans in Agora Capital, we're going to be transparent with the value of every loan in your portfolio so that when we're having those conversations about what the value is to sell a loan or to refinance a loan, you have that information. And that information changes, right? So for anyone that's ever sold a loan or sold a portfolio of loans, you know, you, you put the loans together, you put it out to a broker, or hopefully you upload it to Agora, um, and you put it out there for sale, and people bid on it. And you spend a bunch of time negotiating, you get to a rate, and then they kick out a bunch of loans that may be like undesirable, right? Uh, and then, you know, it's, you're hard pressed to try and negotiate that rate that you already agreed upon up after they kicked out a bunch of loans and, you know, what we call cherry picked the portfolio. Uh, on the Agora platform, if that happens, the value updates because we're doing that valuation on the loan level. So if you add more loans in or remove loans, the value updates because it's just the aggregate of each individual loan that you're looking at. So what is Agora Capital? Um, at its core, it's uh, kind of similar to what we're doing with trade, but we're pooling a bunch of loans and securitizing those and selling the bonds uh, in the capital markets. And what this does is it, it gets us a really low interest rate that we are then able to pass along to you all. So you're probably saying like, okay, well, how is that different than any other line of credit that exists out there um, other than maybe a better interest rate, which is great, saving a little money, it's wonderful. Um, but it's not the end all be all. And you know, what the hell, why am I gonna go change my entire business process for a little bit of money? Well, it is different because when you securitize loans, you offload all the risk as well. So not only is it you know, single digit interest rates, there's no cap either. Um, so if you currently have a cap with your line of credit, um, there is no cap put on you to how much you can, tr can contribute to a security and you can keep contributing to future securities and there's never gonna be some cap that is put on how much you can contribute based on your balance sheet. It doesn't exist. Um, there's also no personal guarantees, right? So you usually have to make a personal guarantee of your house or your lot or something like that with client credit. It doesn't exist. Um, because there's no caps, you're free to grow, right? You're taking what you have. If you have a line of credit, you're paying off your line of credit, you're moving those loans into the securization. Or if uh, you know, you're financing it yourself, great, you just got a bunch of cash. Now you're free to go buy more cars maybe expand and buy another lot. 
Uh, but you have that now, and it's, you're free to grow at whatever pace, basically, you can do it at. Uh, and then there's, there's no financial covenants. So while it operates very similar to a traditional line of credit, it is also very different. And when you're you know, on the platform, we really don't want to say, this is, you know, go over here and refinance and capital or sell your loans uh, or hold on to them. We want to give you the tools and the knowledge to make the decision that's best for you and, and your business. Um, but having said that, you know, there's a couple of things to consider. So if you're holding on to the loans, right, you own those loans, you owe all of the payments and all of the residuals that come along with them, but your cash comes over, you know, the life cycle of that loan portfolio, right? So it streams in. Uh, so there's, you know, no cash now. Um, you know, if you have a line of credit, your, your growth is capped at, at what you can borrow against that line. And then you hold all of the risk, right? So if the economy falls off from under us, which I think we were all holding our breaths a little over a year ago, hoping that that wasn't going to happen, and thank God it didn't to this industry, but it did to many others, um, you know, you, you hold all the risk uh, in your business when you hold on to your loans. Inversely, if you sell them, you sell them for, you know, a percentage of the UPB, and uh, usually that's the highest you can get cash-wise right now, um, but, you know, you lose all of the future residuals to get that cash now, but you've also offloaded your risk, right? So your line's freed up, you can grow. If you refinance in capital, it's kind of the best of both worlds because you offload a lot of the risk. Let's say advances are usually in the 60 to 75% range and they're, um, they're non-recourse as well. So you get that advance and you'll never have to give it back no matter what happens. The entire world economy could crash that advance is yours, it, no one can touch it. Um, so you, you offload you know, a large portion of the risk on your portfolio, but at the same time, you also own all of the upside. Um, and again, it's, it's uncapped, so you can grow as fast as you can. Uh, what does it do for your customers? The hope is that we're going to Wall Street to get lower interest rates, we're passing those rates on to you. The hope is that those rates also get passed on to the consumer. Therefore, lowering payments, um, lowering likelihoods for defaults, and ultimately trying to help customers get out of this cycle of uh, you know, uh, credit mishaps. So kind of the fun part of all of this, being the data guy that I am, I love looking at numbers. Um, what are the things we can do to kind of originate in the best way possible. Um, and before I can jump into that, I kind of have to talk about how we do it. So we use artificial intelligence and uh, a subset of that called machine learning. I am going to make an assumption that most people probably don't know what machine learning is. <laughs> um, I spent a good part of my career recently as a data scientist. Um, and what the job of a data scientist is, is to uh, look at big data and figure out what the story is that comes out of that data. Um, and that's, you know, machine learning and AI is kind of the tools you use to do that. So before I jump into what machine learning is, I got to kind of say AI is not, you know, sentient robots coming to take over the world. The <laughs> most advanced robot that currently exists right now uh, is I think in like a lab at Stanford and it's an arm that can play rock, paper, scissors, and it's apparently not that good at it either. So that, that's about as advanced AI as far as machine goes. What AI really is, is things that we use every day. The most common thing is every time we say, hey Siri or Alexa, uh, and we ask it a question and it returns an answer, that is AI. Um, you know, Tesla's always in the news with their autonomous vehicles. That is AI. One of my favorite apps, Vivino, uh, allows you to take a picture of a bottle of wine and it tells you what it's raining is and gives you some descriptions about it. Uh, it's able to do that through AI. Um, the robots in AI are really just a piece of software that sits on a computer and clicks buttons instead of a human doing it in a repeatable process. So that's what robots are in AI. It's like the least interesting thing that exists. <laughs> 
Um, and then what we use is machine learning. And um, we also see this every day. So if you're on Netflix and it's recommending a show to you, uh, that is machine learning. And it does that through observed history. So it's looking at all the historical data and saying, hey, based on history, I can make uh, an assumption on a future outcome. So because you have watched all these shows, all these other people that watch these shows also like this show. So I'm going to recommend it to you. Uh, and that's what machine learning is. So Agora has billions of dollars of historical loan data that we're able to look at. And when we see a new loan, we go uh, put it through our machine learning model. And it looks at a bunch of loans that look similar and then is able to predict the performance on that loan. Uh, and that is a very simple explanation of it. There's lots of math and um, algorithms behind the scenes uh, that only true nerds want to talk about. So I will spare you all from that. But that's kind of how we do what we do. So I wanted to take that now and jump into a real world scenario. So how do I use data to improve my portfolio performance? So we're going to look at an example. It's a uh, 2014 Ford F-150. So I'm from Texas, so we have to use a truck for this example. Uh, it has 100,000 miles. The book value is $7,000. Uh, we're going to use a 2199 APR, 34 month term, $1,000 down, and a monthly payment term. So the main question you know, when originating this loan is, well, how much should I sell the car for? Right? And in the kind of buy here, pay here especially, but independent you know, uh, community, the, the ranges on which a $7,000 car is sold for uh, vary widely. So I'm just going to jump into the data. Uh, the column on the left is LTV or loan to value. Um, it's the amount of the loan divided by the book value in our case. So if uh, $7,000, you know, if we sold it for $14,000, that's twice the amount, or 200%. Um, so that's a 200% LTV in this example. Um, this is done at origination. It is run through the Agora model. Uh, and it shows you at each of those LTVs, what would your amount finance be and your monthly payment with that 34-month term. And then on the right is our proprietary Agora book value. So what would this loan be worth if you sold it today? Uh, and you're probably looking at it and you're going, oh, 50%, that kind of sucks. <laughs> uh, that was the first thing I thought uh, when I came in and I started looking at this data and I'm like, well, this looks like a pretty good loan, you know, uh, especially the you know, first view. Why is that value so low? And the value is low because this is at origination, there's no seasoning, uh, first payment defaults are real, and you know, I forgot to put up here, but credit score is also 500 on this customer. Um, first payment defaults are real, and as every payment is made, the risk significantly reduces, especially at the start. So three months of seasoning on a loan is good, six months is even better, you know, 12 months, there's basically very little to no risk left in a loan at that point. Um, so trying to look at a loan at origination is kind of tough because all of them are risky uh, right at the start. You really need to at least have that first payment in before you're able to make kind of a good evaluation. Um, but even if we were you know, saying there's a winner in here, uh, it'd be the 61% at 175% LTV, which tracks because the average LTV on our application is 180%. So let's season this six months and see what happens. So this kind of was the opposite of what I thought when I started looking at data. I thought the more you can sell a car for, the better, right? And to a point, that's kind of true. Because, you know, it, we're saying that the, the value uh, is on that first line is 81% of the unpaid principal balance. So 81% looks like a great number, uh, but 81% of you know, $8,000 is a lot less than 70% of $21,000. I will take a lesser percent of a higher number all day. <laughs> um, but 
this is purposely misleading. I kind of left out a big piece of this equation. I left out the consumer. I didn't put them in here at all. I completely neglected that. So while having data is great, without some context, uh, you still can't make a decision on what to sell this car for. You have to consider the customer. So there's kind of a, a, a golden rule in the data that you want to keep the payment to income below 15%. So if we apply that rule now, and optimals, you know, 12 or below, uh, and we say, okay, I have a customer that, you know, has $3,500 monthly income, and we're applying that rule, now we can go in and we can find the sweet spot for what to sell this car for, based on the customer that we're selling it to. So this is just a very small subset of data, um, and we're working on tools to give our dealers um, and it's kind of faded on the screen, but uh, basically the 150 uh, is supposed to be in green, um, and it's uh, you know saying if I, if I have a 12% payment to income, which would equate to a max of $420 a month payment, then that 418 would be kind of the max payment I could do on this table uh, for that customer. And you know, less than 15% is still very good. Uh, so then that could kick us up to that next one of selling it for 12250 at the $487 payment. Um, but this is, uh, you know, it's, it was kind of eye-opening when I was going through this exercise. Um, but it's, you have to evaluate kind of all sides of the deal. Um, and this is really me only messing with a couple of variables. Uh, there's probably 20 or 30 different variables that go into originating the car loan. So we're working on an app right now that essentially allows you to mess with that and put in all of those values and help you make these decisions. So, all right, so uh, that is all I have.